Before I begin a painting, I like to choose my brushes first. For this painting, I've chosen Blocken, Soft Shading 2, Pebble Texture, Luscious Oil, and Smeary Oil. You don't have to stick with this group of brushes, you can choose your own. But make sure that you test them out and choose the ones that you feel most comfortable with. And this is the paper that I've chosen for this painting. Actually, it's a canvas texture. It's called Gessoed Canvas. And as you can see here, I have it at 0% rotation, 25% scale, 50% contrast, and 50% paper brightness. You can choose this paper and set it to these exact settings or fool around with the settings and see how your brushes react to them. I've opened up my sketch now and we're ready to go. So here you can see that I only have one layer and I really need some breather room. So what I'm going to do is select the entire canvas by hitting Command or Control A and that gives me these little marching ants. And then I'm going to press the Shift key plus the Command or Control key at the same time and press in the center and now you see that I have a duplicate of my canvas layer so that I can tuck layers in between here and tuck layers over the top. Now we're ready to work. At this point I want you to take note of the fact that our canvas layer has become white and our painting layer has been moved up. And I've opened up my reference image and as soon as I touch on that watch this layers panel because now it's the layers panel for this reference image. Make sure you have B for brush and then hit Alt or Option to sample a color like so. Then you go back to this image, you touch on this image and here's your layer and we're going to start painting on that. But I'm not going to paint directly on this layer, I'm going to add a new layer on top and in fact I'm going to call this block in and I'm going to call this layer, double click on the name, sketch, so I know exactly where I am. I want to work on this blank layer, not on this layer. Now I am going to start working on this block in layer and I'm going to sample uh, colors from this image and bring them onto here. Now you don't have to do that, but it makes it a lot easier. I'm also going to be using my block in brush and I begin simply by just putting in basic color shapes. So I'm not really going to be doing any modeling. I come over here, touch on this, and hold down the Alt key or Option key, and you see it samples the color right there. And then I come over here, and as I touch on this image, my layers palette for this image comes up. And I'm just going to block this in again you can make your brush smaller or larger as needed this is going to be very 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 basic come over here and sample this and maybe just to get an idea of a basic color tone doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to be doing the modeling, uh, the major modeling with the other um, brushes. And you can leave the black outlines of the sketch if you want so you know where everything is or you can just paint right over them. See, I'm using a basic turquoise here. So now I'm going to continue this underpainting um, with a time lapse video to speed up the process. You can pause the video though at any point if you want to see me specifically create certain brush strokes.
here is our finished underpainting. And now I've added another layer, a fourth layer, and I'm going to use this to paint on. And I'm leaving my block in layer alone. Notice this is highlighted in blue. And one thing I'm also going to do is pull out my other brushes that I want to use into a custom palette. This is very easy to do. You pick the brush that you want. Let's do soft shading too. Hold down the shift key and touch it and drag it and you instantly get a custom palette like this. Now I'm going to do a pebble texture and then I will do luscious oil. Again, holding down the shift key and smeary oil like so. Now if I want to move these around within the palette, I still have to hold down that shift key. Okay. If I want to give this palette a name so that I know it belongs to this particular painting, I can go up to Window, Custom Palette, over to Organizer, and then hit on Custom 9, say Rename, and I'm going to name that Imitating Cezanne. Like so, press OK, press Done, and there it is. Now, this is, these are our brushes, here are our paints, here's our layer, and here's our reference image, which I've enlarged. Now remember, when you click on an image, that's the image you're working on. Notice how the layers palette changes when I click on this one, and then when I click on this one. Make sure you're on the right image. When I click on this one, I can enlarge it or I can reduce it in size. So here's an advantage of digital painting where you can actually zoom in very easily on your reference image and on your own painting. Now I have my palette over here, so my brushes to the right, and I brought my color wheel over here, my paints to the right as well, so I can just grab and go like this. And I'm gonna start working on this picture. Now if I hit the Command or Control Plus, button on my keyboard, I can enlarge anything, and I can also move these little sliders around. See this like this? So you can really position your painting in a way that's most comfortable for you. Let's begin. I'm going to use a luscious oil, and I can come over here and sample this, and then come back here and touch the painting so that I can actually be on the right painting. And I'm just using my image as reference. You can enlarge your brush, get a little smoother transition. You can decide to put down an underlying color and then layer over that. Just kind of what I'm doing here. Now remember this picture does have to be the brightest spot basically in the painting because it is the focal point. Use your positive and negative space. By that I mean you can draw into the image like I'm doing here and then you can draw around the image so that you can create the correct form.
so. Look at the different colors that he uses to go around the edges. We're not just carving something out. There are a lot of different colors. Even in a shadow. See how this goes from green to mauve to bluish violet to green again. So you can add all of these little nuances, as many as you want in there. Just getting a basic color down and then I will go into that like so. If you use this luscious oil brush and you press down you're going to get some very very nice effects. And look for color changes. If you notice, this is not white. This is a very, very pale peach. And it's up to you how accurate you want to be. Now, notice how his brush strokes change direction with the, the drapery behind there. So you can, you can do the same thing. You might want to add maybe a little variation in there, maybe a touch of warmer tones, cooler tones. 
It's up to you. I've corrected the drawing of the picture with this brush here, Soft Shading 2, and that seems to work really, really well. It actually blends very well. So I'll show you how that works. It's a nice, soft brush. So what I would suggest is work on your drawing Work on your drawing with this brush and then come in as I did here and then come in with thicker paints using these brushes over here, the Luscious Oil and the Smeary Oil. So I'm just coming in here and suggesting some things, the flower, and then come back over here. And it's got a lot of different blues going on here. Again, it depends on how detailed you want to get. Remember, these brushes are pre pressure sensitive, so if you press down, you get more paint. If you go very lightly, you just get a thin smattering of paint. Like so. You blend. And if you want to, you can just use this brush to softly blend everything. Just softly blend it in. Or you can use this brush to draw. So what I'm doing here is I'm just drawing in some stems like so pay attention to the colors now at this point you can actually Play around with the soft shading, yes, but we can add some more luscious paint with our other brushes. Draw with this one. And let's use the luscious oil. actually pull out some color with this brush and let's add a little reflection of the orange in here Okay. 
Again, remembering to push down on the brush if you want thicker paint. Draw with your paint. Now for the lightest areas, you can add a nice juicy highlight. Here I'm using the smeary oil. Like so. Going back to the soft shading for drawing. Remember you can use Control Z to undo. I've continued painting the picture and from this point on we're going to have a time-lapse video until I reach the end. point I've corrected some of my drawing and I've worked around the drapery a little bit more worked on the, the picture over here and now I am going to work on the fruit and again it will be a time-lapse video from this point on I'm going to add a new layer and actually give it the name of fruit like so and I will show you that this layer is basically the background so I can put in background or drapery 
whatever I want to indicate what, which part of the painting this refers to. This one has to do mainly with the picture, so I will change that name so that I know what this refers to. And now let's go to the time lapse part of, that, of our video.
for the tablecloth. is my finished replica of Cezanne's painting, Still Life with Curtain and Flowered Pitcher. Remember to practice and play with your brushes often. I hope you enjoy this tutorial and happy painting. Thank you.